Wow. Happy, happy Monday. I've done two videos today. This is going to be the third and last video for today. Mainly because I haven't really found anything that's worth discussing. I mean, I know that there's some hot topics out there that I don't really want to get into. But I'm going to get into some uh, Texas politics. There is a bill that was proposed during the last session. And the issue, the reason, the reason for this bill is that the cities were taking up ordinances, rules, acting like city states, going beyond what they're authorized to do. So the, the House proposed a bill to limit some of the cities' powers so they don't become city states. Because we're not a city state where a state within many states where the United States we're not city states or the United City States of America we're United States some say that this bill goes too far and takes away local representation or local power but according to the Texas Tribune now this is on msn.com which aggregated it story by Joshua Fetcher 53 minutes ago. There's no comments on it, but that's all right. Let's see here. The Texas Tribune Daily newspaper that keeps readers up to speed with the most essential Texas news was a left-wing twist to it. I mean, they're, they're not as terrible as, like, the political. But they're definitely a left-wing slant to it. Houston officials sued the state of Texas on Monday to stop a sweeping law aimed at gutting all kinds of local ordinances and sapping the power of the state's bluer urban areas. The law, House Bill 2127, dubbed the Death Star by Bill opponents, was signed into law by Governor Abbott in June making Texas Republicans the biggest attempt to kneecap local governments in a year-long assault on Texas' major metropolitan areas, often governed by Democrats. The law prevents cities and counties from creating local ordinances that go further than what is allowed under the broad areas of the state law, an attempt to overturn cities' progressive policies among those policies that mandate water breaks for construction workers in Dallas and Austin, a component of the law that has gained more criticism as Texas experienced a drastic summer heat. You know, this is such a non-issue. Water breaks are such a non-issue. Within the last 10 years, per the Texas Tribune, I haven't had that story pulled up, but 42 people have died within 10 years. It's about... I mean, so... I mean, yes, so those lives do mean... Those do matter. But the thing is, a lot of this is handled by the private sector. There's a... My understanding, there is a safety grade to where the higher the grade you have, the more dangerous your company is. So that means if you have a person that died under work hours, that is negatively affecting your score. And people that are in the corporate field look at that score to determine whether or not they want to do business with you. There's some company policies. If your score is at X, it's just a non-starter. But so there's already OSHA as well, which also mandates a lot of this. Let's see your local leaders and government across the state criticized the proposal of a massive power grab that would prevent them from responding to local needs. The law of broad language they have argued makes it difficult to determine which law ordinances are now illegal and will prompt a litany of lawsuits. In a lawsuit filed Monday in Travis County Court, Houston leaders argue that the new law violates the state constitution 
and significantly weakened cities' authority to self-govern. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe cities shouldn't be able to self-govern the way that they are. The law is unnecessary, dismantling the ability to govern at a level closest to the people and therefore punishing all Texas residents. Maybe, maybe not. Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner said in a statement, Houston will fight, fight it so residents retain their constitutional rights and have immediate local recourse to the government. I don't know how my constitutional rights are being implemented or being um, retained. It just means that these big cities can't pass ordinances that go against Texas law. Advocates and business lobby, particularly the National Federation of Independent Businesses, have long pushed for a wide-ranging law like HB 2127 that negates city rules like mandating water breaks and paid sick leave ordinance in Austin, Dallas, and San Antonio, which courts have prevented from taking effect. HB 2127 is stated or slated to take effect September 1 or 1st. Um, so it's really this right here, paid sick leave. So if you have a business, let's say you got 50 people working there, you have to give them paid sick leave dictated by the city. Now that is something that's up to the state to come up with. Now if the state wants to say small businesses must have paid sick leave, then that's up for the state to do that gets carried on to the city. I don't think cities should have that authority, in my opinion, because there's a lot of people here in Austin that are barely making, barely making rent. I don't know how many local businesses are gone, and that's only increasing with the more rules they implement, adding more costs to an already struggling business. I mean, you, you think these businesses don't want to provide sick leave? You don't think that these businesses want to be competitive and offer certain benefits? They're just not big enough to promote. They're not big enough to have those benefits. And unfortunately, this only helps the bigger companies. It helps the the chain company or not the chain, yeah, the chain companies. This only helps bigger companies. It prevents smaller companies having a competitive edge when everything's against them. It's really an attack on, on small businesses, which makes up most of most employees when you add them together. That's right, the workforce, most of the workforce is working for a mom and pop shop or a small business. That when you add them all together, they hire between anywhere between one to ten employees each. Sometimes they hire a little bit more, but every company hires at least between three to 10 people. And let's say there's about a thousand of these, of these businesses. It adds up over time, which means that anything that you hinder new businesses from starting up would already be too cost prohibitive for a new business to start up. That being said, that is my video for today. And I do hope that Houston loses this case <clears throat> because we don't need city states. We need states to have the majority of the power. We need the, the states to issue guidance to the cities. Now, yes, there is some autonomy that the cities can make that affect them, like maybe water usage to where if it's the middle of a drought and it's only affecting one region of Texas, yes, they could limit how much water we use or when we water our yard, our gardens. That's something that's up to the city. But to say that every business moving forward has to offer health care and pay time off when the business is struggling because the property taxes are so darn high because the city of Austin just raises it to the max amount each year unchecked. It's just going to drive away people from investing in Austin unless 
you're an established company moving into Austin. That being said, that is my video for, for this. That's the third one out of three for today. And have yourself a wonderful and awesome 4th of July tomorrow.